Welcome to our second webinar, uh, Konrad Kobus speaking. Some of you may remember me from previous webinar, uh, but for those of you who are uh, new here today, I will uh, shortly introduce myself. I'm a mechanical engineer working in the research and development um, department at Sinterit, and that's about it. And today I would like to talk about um, a few things uh, you should take into consideration when designing models for um, printing with the uh, SLS Benchtop 3D uh, printer. Um, this webinar is based on my personal experience working with the Synthetic Tisa system and uh, my, my personal experience with working with different um, computer-aided design and computer-aided uh, engineering programs. Uh, obviously, me in my line of work, I use them quite often. So our last webinar was centered around answering questions concerning the selective laser sintering technique uh, as an uh, additive manufacturing process, the advantage and disadvantage of working with such systems, about types uh, of materials we have at, at uh, our disposal, and of course, many, many more. And um, if for some reason uh, you have missed uh, the last webinar, you can still watch it or listen to it at our website, www.sintered.com. And now, without any further delay, let's start our second webinar in which I will talk about, um, among other things, the importance of um, size and material, wall thickness, minimum detail size and engraved details, functional gaps and minimum um, feature size, pockets, cavities and escape holes, um, all very important when designing geometries for um, SLS manufacturing processes. So. After the presentation, Adriana, our international sales manager, will join me, and together we will answer all your questions. Hopefully, you'll have some. Please write down any questions you may have for us in the discussion area located just below the presentation. Don't do it in the tab you see uh, on your right side because the tab you see on your right side is a general chat uh, and uh, it is reserved for um, for you to communicate with our staff about technical matters concerning this webinar. So, for example, whether the audio is fine and um, you can hear us or you can't hear us. So, you can. So, I think we can start this webinar. So, maybe you are considering getting an SLS 3D printer and maybe you are interested in the um, design process, you know, just before you invest your hard earned funds into SLS technology and fully commit to it. Um, don't worry, Synthred's got you covered. And there are several important things and useful hints you need to take um, into consideration when designing your models for manufacturing with Synthred-Lisa systems. For our new viewers, and for the older ones, uh, the animation on this slide shows the printing process of Synthetic Lisa systems. So as you can see, um, a layer of powder is transported via a recoder mechanism from one chamber to the other one. And in the second chamber, the uncentered powder is uh, heated up uh, and is um, uh, selectively centered by means of additional energy provided by an infrared um, laser. So the process uh, will repeat until all of the centered um, surfaces uh, create a desired object. So the thickness of the layer can be as thin as 0.075 millimeters um, if you use the metric system, and if you use the imperial one, it's 0.003 inches. So before the print can proceed, you need to have a virtual representation of the geometry you want to print, so the actual model itself. And there are several ways you can acquire a virtual model. For instance, going online and finding it on one of, the, of, one of several uh, websites, providing free virtual models designed by other users, or simply receiving it from an interested party, Mm, obtaining models from the net is a fairly simple method. Uh, however, most of the time you won't find the model you require and having a model from a 
potential client is a completely different um, story. Uh, another possibility uh, is to use a 3D printing, uh, a 3D uh, scanning system to receive a virtual representation of an already existing uh, physical element. But um, just be sure to take into consideration the um, scanner's resolution and other factors inseparably connected with um, using vision-based systems. Um, and last but not least, uh, you can design your own, own virtual model by means of a computer-aided um, design or computer-aided engineering software, which, as an R&D uh, person, I highly recommend. And um, the third way involves getting specific software, learning how to work with it, and having at least some idea of how to design your models with respect to producing them using the SLS technique. Mm, and when you match those requirements, you will truly benefit from having an SLS system. You will be either an independent designer with your own very own rapid prototyping or even manufacturing tool, or you will be a truly independent manufacturer, not only producing objects from somebody's design, but also providing solutions for a client who is not proficient enough in, let's say, designing arts. So let me give my words some weight by um, providing an example, namely Synteret itself. As a Synteret's R&D engineer, having access to an SLS system, I'm able to prototype elements or even entire mechanisms based on that technology. And um, let's say today I have an idea concerning a new solution. Tomorrow I'll make a CAD design of that idea and probably start printing. The next day or sometimes two days later, depending on the complexity of my idea, I have a physical representation of my design and thus an answer to the question whether my idea was correct or not. But as I said, for all that to happen besides an idea, I need a CAD software. In my line of work, I learned to use multiple commercial software, namely um, the Salt Systems Katia, uh, Autodesk Inventor, or Autodesk Fusion 360, PTC Creo, formerly known as Pro Engineer, Alibra Design, and many, many more. Not to worry, there are also several freeware or open um, source programs which you can find on the net and use them as you see fit. Just remember to support the designers of that software. So right now at Sinterit, um, I'm working with the Salt System SolidWorks in which we as a company design geometries for um, SLS printing, uh, but maybe more importantly, we also build uh, components uh, of the actual LISA uh, system. So specifically, SolidWorks provides a tool called Print3D. What it does is um, allows to check whether a model fits the printer's workspace and if necessary, to scale it with a scale to fit option. The model can be scaled to its maximal size corresponding to the 3D printer's workspace. Um, you just need to enter the printer's workspace uh, dimensions and define the surface of the model, which will be uh, parallel to the printing bed. So basically from this surface, the print uh, will start. Its functionality, I mean the option, um, the functionality of the option is a bit more extended for FDM printers rather than SLS ones, but it's still a welcome addition, and also it signalizes that uh, this signalizes the recognition the 3D printing additive manufacturing process deserve. So after choosing computer-aided design or computer-aided enge engineer uh, software, you have few methods of modeling your geometry. Uh, so solid modeling, surface modeling, and a hybrid solid surface modeling methods. There are also methods for modeling geometries uh, made from uh, metal sheets and modeling geometries intended for casting purposes, like molds. And those are just the basic tools. Um, today's generative design tools can offer hundreds, if not thousands, of alternatives for an engineer to evaluate. Aids to design efficiency are becoming increasingly um, critical. Uh, requirements are often conflicting, forcing engineers to think of trade-offs between, let's say, design complexity versus manufacturing costs or uh, capabilities, whether something is even possible to engineer in certain uh, manufacturing technology. And so, few computer-aided engineering programs like SolidWorks simulation, offer iterate on designs to explore all possible solutions based on requirements and constraints. And then the engineer chooses the optimal design. So in summary, 
generative design tools rely on computer-aided design um, simulations to evaluate successive designs against performance requirements. The algorithms behind those tools try to find the best shape for a part, typically um, to minimize stress and strain uh, hotspots in response to certain loads, uh, while also minimizing weight and mass. So, um, objects like casings, brackets, door hinges, um, even chairs and crane booms are um, examples of parts designed through topology optimization, often resulting in a kind of a organic looking designs. So example, uh, a Toyota's uh, lightweight car set uh, seat, sorry, uh, intended to be 3D printed or optimal devices, optimalized lacrosse head designed by taking all necessary 3D printing um, directions into consideration. And if you don't know what lacrosse is, uh, go see Archer. It's a, it's a fantastic uh, serial. So we've also made our very own uh, race car suspension model based on topology optimization analysis with um, all necessary rotational and prismatic joints in place so it can be printed in just one go. So it is worth noting that this technique is especially useful in designing parts for additive manufacturing, so like SLS. And the reason why is that traditional manufacturing, uh, let's say sub subtractive manufacturing processes, involves machining tools which sometimes can't move in such a way to recreate the exact ge given geometry. Uh, either the tool will be in collision with the object or it has too few um, degrees of freedom. Um, so it can't reach a certain surface or the object uh, or can't reach it from a certain position or orientation. So another option available is injection molding, but even molds have limited geometry shape, especially when it comes to all sorts of internal channels. Um, they are also economically justified only when an element will be mass produced. If not, then you have no justification, you just lose money. And that's where the additive um, manufacturing technologies shine most brightly. And that's why, for example, SLS printers are are very valuable manufacturing tools. And based on all predictions, they will continue to play a much bigger role in today's production industries. So having a great um, uh, software and hardware is definitely a solid base to start with, but to achieve optimal results, even the best machine has to be used in a safe and efficient way. 3D printing, printing isn't maybe a new technology, but the SLS technique really is a cutting edge solution in this field of technological advancement. Uh, it's a good thing, obviously, but it also makes SLS printing even more of an unknown. Um, designers have to know how to work with specific systems and um, many things need to be learned and understood first. And as luck, will have, as luck would have it, Synthetic is here to help. And um, now I'll present the six things you need to take note of when designing for the Synthetic Lisa system. So the most basic and obvious thing is that size of your printout is constrained by the size of the printing bed. So yeah, thanks Captain Obvious. It is obvious, but still it needs to be taken into consideration during the design phase because um, it pretty much defines the overall dimensions of objects you'll be able to create. Although most of the time um, there is the possibility of dividing your geometry and printing it as several separate elements uh, with, let's say, built-in connection features connection features like the snap fit design you can see on this slide. Um, or you can design your elements or pre-design them, pre-design the surface for a fit assembly or for gluing those surfaces with um, another element uh, and so on so on. The possibilities are potentially endless and limited only with the designer's experience and the element's purpose or working condition. Uh, the important thing to note here is that size and space aren't the only factor. For example, um, while Lisa build chamber is 150 by 200 by 150 millimeters, the actual possible size of uh, high precision prints uh, varies depending on the material used for printing. So for materials from the PA group, so nylons basically, it's 
90 by 120 by 130 millimeters. And for the TPUs, the numbers are a bit higher, 110 by 160 by 150 millimeters. Um, you need to be aware that what kind of material you'll be best will be best for your particular needs. Um, considering size, but also factors like chemical and temperature resistances. I would say analyze your options ahead of time and choose wisely. Another thing uh, you have to take into account when planning to print something on an SLS 3D printers is wall thickness. For larger objects, the recommended thickness is 0.8 millimeters, but in case of smaller prints, um, in case of smaller prints, the walls can be thinner up to around 0.4 millimeters. Um, you can't get them any thinner than that right now because the minimal thickness depends on the diameter of the laser used in our system. And let's not uh, forget about the lack of support. Um, let's go back to the, to the previous slide. The lack of support structures um, means uh, greater design freedom. So in fact, SLS is one of the easier 3D printing technologies to design for. Now, walls are one thing, but what about smaller details? The situation is quite similar. Um, one of the biggest advantages of SLS printing is its high accuracy, up to 0.1 millimeter. This allows you to receive unparalleled level of detail equal only to SLA printouts and only when taken into consideration printing without supports. And if there are present, I mean the supports in the SLA printing, then they leave all sorts of artifacts uh, on the surface of your printout. So um, the accuracy is much lower. And um, the digital level is impossible to achieve with any FDM printer in general, uh, industrial class or otherwise. So the high accuracy is another thing you should consider when making designs and another reason why your creativity won't be nearly as restricted as in case of other manufacturing technologies. Um, to, simply, to put it simply, you don't need to restrain yourself nearly as much and it's important to make use of that. So you also need to be aware if you want to put some embosses or engraved details, letters or digits and so on and so on. If so, the minimal thickness of for embosses details should be around 0.15 millimeters or uh, of height. And for engravings, it should be 0.15 millimeters in depth. For letters or digits, it should be 0.5 to 0.6 millimeters of extra height if you want to receive an, an, an emboss and 0.5 millimeters of depth when um, dealing with engravings. In the second case, you should consider using a clear, easily readable font. A good example is uh, Sans Serif and Arial Bold, though anything with uh, thick, relatively simple letters and uh, symbols should be fine as long as you're not, uh, as long as they are not too small. Uh, another special case uh, are print pins. They also need to be thick enough in diameter to uh, serve their role. A good way to ensure they are. Um, uh, a, good, a, a good way to ensure uh, there are is creating offsets of about 0.15 millimeters to 0.2 millimeter in height. So using SLS 3D printing, you can print moving parts in one go and have your entire print ready for, uh, for printing um, uh, for much faster and, and much faster printing because of it. Uh, however, if you want to do so, you'll need to leave enough space between the joints surfaces. And it has to be considered when you are creating designs because if you won't do that, then the, the joints won't rotate or they won't move. So um, the absolute um, minimal clearance is 0.2 millimeters. Um, but we actually recommend a bit more, especially in case of 3D printing beginners. It's quite easy to make a pretty time consuming error. So we advise the gap to be around 0.4 millimeters, and that should be uh, fine for most cases. Even we sometimes have difficulties in, um, 
in determining whether we have 0.2 or 0.3 millimeter gaps, we simply have to uh, have to find out for our um, ourselves. Another factor that you should consider, uh, at least in case of some prints, is um, the feature size. Usually, you should go thinner than you shouldn't go thinner than 0.8 to uh, one millimeter. Uh, through um, sometimes. Uh, there are exceptions uh, focused mainly around the purpose of the printed geometry. Um, details on figurines, architectural or medical models can be as thin as 0.5 uh, millimeters, while loaded elements will probably have to be thicker than that, not to break, for example. It's very important to remember one thing. Never design models with fully confined cavities if you want those cavities hollow. Um, it will make removing all, all of the uncentered material impossible during post-processing and sometimes making your prints useless, at least not uh, without a lot of additional work, like manually draining holes uh, or pockets just to get the uncentered powder out. In other cases, like designing your geometries in such a way to have them consciously uh, leaving uncentered powder trapped inside just to speed up the printing process or to save the lifetime of the laser system, then it's all fine and well and you shouldn't worry. In general, the thicker your model is, the easier, it, the easier it is to leave holes in it, but the greater the diameter of the holes should be. So if you want to um, have just one escape hole, make it at least four millimeters in diameter. But um, you should probably consider two or more just to be safe. And if there are more than two holes of two millimeters in diameter, um, that should be enough. Um, in such a case, it's also a good idea to make them all in uh, line of sight. It makes cleaning much easier. So the last thing um, concerns, uh, concerns appropriate file resolution, and this is very important. So let's assume for a moment that by taking all, your all our tips into consideration, you design your model as best as you possibly could and are now ready to save it as a file readable by Synterit Studio. It is vital to ensure the appropriate resolution when saving the model, because it will determine its overall accuracy. Example, when saving your model to an STL file in SOLIDWORKS, you have the option to change the deviation and angle tolerances. Without going too deep into details, bear, bear with me on this one, please. Um, the lower the values of deviation and angle tolerances will be, um, the more polygons the mesh grid approximating um, uh, uh, the model's geometry will have. And that's what we call high resolution. And as a result, the more accurate the model's representation becomes and vice versa. The higher the devi deviation and angle tolerances values are, the lower the number of polygons generated and the lower the, res the resolution we receive, the lesser the model's representation accurateness becomes. So let's compare the two representations of the same model saved as two different STL files uh, with different tolerances applied. On the left side, with the highest tolerances, um, tolerance values possible to set with the software, we achieve the worst possible resolution. And on the right side, with the lowest tolerances uh, values possible, we achieve the finest possible uh, quality. The continuous um, surfaces, uh, without any visible edges become non-continuous with lots of visible edges. Around holes are not round anymore and are represented by polygons and so on, so on. Um, at the end of the day, if you have a well-designed model and save it as a low uh, quality, low resolution file, don't immediate, immediately blame the printer for the, for the outcome. Just try to see for yourself what, what, what's happening. And one, one other thing, keep in mind, the higher the model's resolution, the more space the file will take on your drive. So sometimes a compromise between those two parameters um, is needed, but that's a totally um, different story.
So these are the most, or these were the most important things uh, you need to take into consideration where, when designing um, your models intended for manufacturing with SLS systems, uh, at least based on the Synteric Lisa printers. Uh, remember, most of them are just guidelines and, and not strict rules to cling um, to. As with many manufacturing tools, you need to work uh, with it. You need to learn it. Um, try to slowly cross the boundaries which the technology imposes on you, but just at the very beginning. Uh, on one hand, the SLS technique of printing gives you a lot of manufacturing possibilities. On the other hand, forgives a lot of mistakes at the same time, so it's a win-win, basically. And with time and correct software, you will gain enough experience to free the potential of your SLS 3D printing. To stay updated, Make sure you are following us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or any of those channels. I hope that you enjoyed this part of the webinar, and I hope you find it quite useful. And right now, um, Adriana is already with me, and we can start answering your questions. Hi, guys. We are waiting for your questions. Please uh, write if you have any uh, below the screen and the, below the presentation. You will have the there the... Uh, a uh, space to fill in. So we are waiting for your questions. Oh, so we have the first. We have the first question. Um, yes, uh, I have a question, but that should be in the previous webinar. Uh, oh. Okay, you can uh, watch this one. Uh, can you talk about the compensation? Um, the compensation, um, probably, probably meaning the compensation of length. Yes. So when you are when you have the model, you have um, uh, you have some sort of length that you would like to have in tolerances. So let's say you have one hundred millimeters of length, and you want to have them between um, ninety nine point nine millimeter to one hundred point one millimeter. Yes. So. Um, um, the, the compensation basically is within the software. So the software thinks for, for the user, let's say, um, how much amount of powder or uh, what should be the power of the laser and so on, so on. So basically the software is doing the, uh, the compensation, the compensation of tolerances, the compensation of the lengths uh, for you. Uh, of course, you have... Uh, some parameters within the um, the software, the Synteric Studio, uh, for instance, shrinkage in the X, Y, or Z axis, um, because you know sometimes um, the software will not um, will not give you proper, um, let's say, compensation. So therefore, you can adjust the compensation by yourself. But most of the time, even working here, we do not compensate uh, uh, the lengths by ourselves the Disintegrate Studio, the software does it for us. So I hope this was the um, uh, the um, answer to the question. Okay, I will, thank you. Uh, I will answer for the second question about uh, black color. So the question is, is it possible to print in other than black? Uh, of course, <laughs> we also print in dark gray, <laughs> almost black, but uh, I'm not sure that you uh, are aware that uh, recently we released uh, white material, almost white material. Uh, it is called uh, Flexa Bright. Uh, you can check this on our website. Uh, we can send you some samples of this material, of course, uh, if you write us a message. Uh, but yes, yes, so we, we print from other uh, colors uh, and you can dye this uh, Flexa Bright as well. So, of course. Another question is about uh, cost calculations. Uh, so I think I will <laughs> answer this one as yeah, well. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Um, regarding cost calculation, uh, what is the best way? Uh, we can send you some examples. Uh, we have uh, standard forms for cost calculations. Uh, we do not have it uh, yet in the software, uh, but if you write uh, me or, uh, or or to contact at synteric.com, uh, we could share with you this uh, form with cost calculations. So just uh, give us uh, information or mail and we will send you this uh, example of cost, cal cost calculations. Okay, uh, next questions. Uh, if you print an assembled model on a specific angle, is it true you can use a smaller gap? So 
Uh, that's a tricky question. Um, because you can you lose smaller gaps? I would say no. I would say it's like um, as as follows. Let's say you have two uh, two rounded objects, a cylinder and 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 a cylinder, a, a ring basically. So a cylinder and a ring. Um, if you will place them uh, perpendicular to 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 the plate, the built plate, um, the gaps uh, let's say should be 0.2 or 0.3 millimeters. If you will do it um, uh, um, within a certain angle probably the gaps would have to be more than 0.2 or 0.3 millimeters. Why? Um, because, um, uh, as you remember, the, 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 the layer thickness or the height of the layer can be as small as 0.075 millimeters. So basically, uh, if you would imagine a, a view, you would cross-section the, 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 the joints or, or you would cross-sect the, the element, you will see that it's not... Uh, it's not continuous. The, the 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 edge is not continuous. It's um, it's uh, let's say you have you have some sort of steps. Okay, so those steps will um, generate smaller gaps than you have originally. So if you are printing um, uh, at a specific angle, you will need to uh, make uh, uh, even higher values gaps. So not smaller but higher value gaps, okay? And if you would be, you will be printing a, a, a joint, as I said before, in the perpendicular way to the print bed, then the gap can be smaller, okay? So, so that's, I think, the, the answer to the question. Um, next question is, is it possible to print nylon in full bed size? Uh, Conrad? Uh, 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 yes, uh, is it possible to print nylon in full bed size? In full bed, no, because the full bed, as I said, the full bed size is uh, is one hundred fifty by two hundred by uh, one hundred fifty. So no, the, the 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 biggest element you can print is ninety to one hundred. I think ten by one hundred thirty. I think. Uh, let me go. Let me go back to to the presentation, uh, and I will find find it for sure, not to make any um, any mistakes. Um, yeah, it's here. So you will have ninety millimeters by one hundred thirty millimeters by one hundred and ten millimeters. So a cube of that kind you can print. A cube. So, if you would like a cube that is basically uh, maximal uh, working space or printing space of of, of our Lisa uh, One or Lisa Pro system, then yes, you can, but not not higher than that. Okay, it's it's it will be impossible because you will be going onto the red zone, and as we all know, the red zone uh, is not uh, advisable for anyone. So, so. Um, okay, next question is, uh, have you used the gener generative design for the LISA? Um, the answer to that question is yes. As I've mentioned before, we have the, uh, let me, let me go back to, <clears throat> to the, um, to the presentation. Mm, where is it? It's here. <clears throat> so we've done our, our, the, the, the race car suspension, a very small, uh, uh, sized race car suspension, and this is what we've achieved basically by um, suggesting uh, uh, by the simulations of of the, the generic uh, uh, tools. So this is this is what we received. It's not um, it's not of course it's not uh, maybe the the most organic thing you you see, and it's also maybe not the thing that the, the program uh, one hundred percent recommended to us. But this is basically. Uh, what we what we um, what we have and what we received and we also printed it, but unfortunately we don't have uh, a photo uh, to to show you right now. But we can send you probably if you'll uh, give us your 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 email, we can send you the, the photo and and show you how how it looked. Okay, thank you. Next question is uh, about the dye. What types of dye are used for Flexabrite? Any chance uh, of material clear transluent uh, PMMA and in near future? Uh, maybe I will answer. Um, uh, we did not uh, test uh, dye by yourself. Maybe it's uh, some small way. Um, our customer tests a lot of dyes. Uh, so we have to ask them if they can share the results with us. So we will be able to share them with you as well. Uh, 
so we will send you by email uh, more detailed information, I guess. Uh, regarding the material, uh, clear, I don't think is it possible uh, in our uh, technology, in fact. Uh, and PMMA, I think, uh, need a higher temperature, I guess. Yeah, so the clear, yeah, the, 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 the clear, the, the tr transparent, let's say, materials, are, I think, are, are out of the question. So, so no. Okay, next question. Uh, where can we find out uh, how many hours the machine is working totally from the beginning so we can arrange the changing time of spare parts? Um, yeah, so this is, this is an information you can find um, uh, when, you, when you are working with the Synterit Studio uh, software because when you, when you uh, load the model, you will place it, orient, and so on, so on. You'll have all the options uh, uh, set you have the slicing process and the slicing process when it's done uh, it will give you the amount of time the printer the total amount of time the printer will be um will be working so basically it will have the uh heat up time the printing time and also the cool down time so this is this is given in the in the software so so this is the answer to the question uh, okay, uh, one uh, more from uh, Lyco. Uh, yes, okay, but I meant have you used generative design for a part for uh, the Lisa? Ah, so to create parts uh, of, of the Lisa itself. Um, uh, well, I can only uh, speak for myself, no. I, um, well, I'm not that old, but I, 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 I uh, uh, really uh, rely on myself and on my knowledge uh, how, to, how to design elements. And therefore, uh, no, I, I rely on myself. So I, I haven't, uh, so we, or, or we haven't uh, made, the, 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 no, none of the components of the Lisa, of the Lisa is made by, by the generic uh, uh, tools. No, no. No, because uh, as I said before, sorry, because this is important. As I said before, um, um, the, the, the generic tools uh, uh, produce a very organic like shaped uh, designs. And, you know, as I said, the uh, conventional methods of engineering, of manufacturing, like uh, machining and so on, so on, you, you wouldn't be able to, to produce uh, a metal, uh, let's say, a uh, machining metal uh, element that would be shaped organically, shaped, and so on, so on. So, uh, even if we, even if we would like to uh, to do it, we can't because the technology would limit us. Okay, our potential. So, so it's it's as I said, only the SLS or uh, even more generally, only the additive uh, manufacturing processes are. Uh, uh, excellent for for the uh, for the genetic uh, ge generic uh, 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 genetic tools and so on so on. Okay, not not the conventional manufacturing. Okay, so this is the reason why we don't have in Lisa there is not a single element that would be created uh, using those uh, those options. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, I will go to questions uh, of Mr. Bruze. As uh, I may apologize, I skip it. Uh, so, maybe it was me. Maybe it was me. Yes. So, sorry. so uh, what will happen when model will be partially in yellow area of the bed? So, uh, in fact, uh, this yellow area is uh, issue or not the issue uh, for nylon. So PA11 and PA12. Uh, however, our uh, machine is uh, so stable, so uh, you can use uh, the yellow area as well. Uh, if you get more knowledge of the machine, you will know how uh, much of the model you could put to the yellow area. Yeah, the, the, the yellow area basically is something uh, that was, um, let's say, uh, 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 that was uh, given to the machine uh, very early on. And now uh, when we have our, uh, when, when we upgraded our Lisa uh, and also we have the Lisa, Lisa Pro, we, we have the knowledge to basically uh, uh, print on the yellow surface as well, and in 99.9, <clears throat> let's say percent, uh, the the uh, the printers will, will will work fine and well. But you know, we can't guarantee 100 percent it it will be as so. But uh, in the Lisa Pro, I know that the yellow zone basically can be the green zone. So okay, we have uh, one. Uh... 
issue from Mats. Uh, what happened to my question looks like it got deleted. Uh, we did not delete it, any questions. So if you have uh, still this question, just write again, maybe. Yeah, write it again, yeah, so no, no problem. problem, no problem. Okay. We are, um, we are used to answering different the difficult questions, so. Yes, and uh, questions from Bryler. Uh, will, will you be making the presentation available via PDF? Uh, of course, uh, and also you will be able to watch this again, and we will send uh, this information by email, so no problem, you will be able to watch this web webinar again, so nothing is lost. Yeah, as in, as in last webinar, the last webinar, the first webinar is on our um, page, www.centred.com, so this, this one will also be on, on the page. And the second question from Bryler, how I, how do I go about getting the Synthesis Studio software so I can start getting familiar before use Lisa Pro? Uh, if you uh, have confirmed order, uh, we will be able to send you uh, the software. Uh, so you can write to our support and uh, one of my colleagues just provide you the link to download. Okay. Okay, red zone forbidden uh, for forbidden for nylons. Yes, what is the reason of this? Is the temperature more higher or lower? Uh, I try to work in the red zone, but I observed that it melts more. Uh, also, I did not uh, print it after uh, uh, I also I did not uh, print it after a line. The printing in the yellow zone was very good on each print. Okay. Um, I'll uh, I'll say uh, I'll answer like this: the red zone is very closely to the bulbs, the heaters, basically. So uh, you have from the very beginning you have a high temperature there, and also if the laser will give you an additional energy, as you said, you will have a, a much more melted down a part. Okay, so the red zone, as I said, this is this is the the, the problem with the red zone. It has a, a, a bigger temperature, and therefore um, the prints made in the red zone will be will will melt. Well, will be melted like melted like down. Um, so it's 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 you can't print there because you won't have a quality print. So so this is this is how it is. As you said, uh, and the, the 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 yellow zone is basically now the green zone, or most of the time is 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 the green zone basically. But the red, no, the red stay out of red. Um, it's just the it's it's just too close to the to the heaters and and so stay 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 far away as possible from the red zone of course you can do it on your own risk but um we do not recommend it any uh, no one from from Sinterit, uh, uh, uh workers will ever say you to 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 print on the red zone no uh, okay uh, do you see a difference in strength in the different di directions x y and z uh, so do I need to orient my model in a certain direction for max strength in bending forces? Yes. Yes, there is a slight differences in directions. The best thing you uh, want to do or you, you, you should do is uh, printing, um, printing, let's say you have a, let's say you have a beam. So it, it, it's advisable to print the beam in XY axis or in the XY plane basically and not in the Z axis okay but that won't be uh, that's that's not possible because the beam would then uh, uh, bend itself or it would be short uh, shortened it would shrink and so on and so on so you need to print it uh, uh, in a certain angle okay but as I said so the, the, there are some differences but as we've measured uh, and concluded the differences are let's say 10 percent of strength so is 10 percent um, that's big of a deal may Maybe for for some users it will be, but for most of you, I think um, up to ten percent. I think it would be. It, it, it it's not it's not that big of a deal. Let's say you have forty six megapascals of strength. Uh, so ten percent is four point six. So you'd have forty one megapascals of strength. So I think this is this is um, this is not that big of a, of a deal. Okay, so this is the answer. This is the answer to the question. So yes, the direction the direction uh, 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 is influencing the uh, the stress, but uh, as I said, max ten percent, nothing more. Uh, 
Okay, so maybe similar question. My question was to the orientation of the models, especially regarding tolerances to moving parts, axis, etc. Layer res resolution Z versus layer laser resolution X and Y. Is it something you have to consider before printing? If I understood the 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 the, the question correctly, um, mm, the best tolerance, the best accuracyness is in X Y. Uh, surface in X, Y axis. And uh, we have customers that um, even contact us and said, um, sometimes the tolerances that you received in the X, Y, or we, uh, yeah, we received on the X, Y uh, axis are 30, 40 micrometers. You can't achieve that um, on the FDMs, um, that's for sure. I don't know about SLAs because I don't, uh, I didn't work with them, but uh, Adriana did, so she will probably uh, tell you more within a moment. Uh, so, so yeah, so the tolerances in X, Y uh, axes are uh, are very good, up to as I said, 0.1 millimeter. Okay, but you can have lower. It depends. Well, it's, the answer is very complicated and depends on the uh, powder uh, size, uh, on the laser um, uh, accuracy uh, of, of the laser, uh, and also the re repeatability of the laser and so on and so on. It's a very complicated, basically it's a very complicated uh, answer. But uh, as I said, X, Y <clears throat> is perfect. The Z has a lesser of a tolerances. Uh, okay. Uh uh, I will give you maybe some additional words. Yes, it is very important to prop uh, orient properly the model in the bed uh, to achieve the, the best results. Um, so uh, we have a comment here. If you have a hinge pin, is it best to put it vertical? Right? Uh, yes. I guess, yes. Uh, it co could be the best result. So in uh, every, every model should be considered in which way uh, should be rotated uh, and placed in the printing area. Uh, for example, flat, uh, large surfaces should be printed, rotated. Uh, for, uh, to in prevent, all axes, yes. yes. To prevent warping, for example. So yes, uh, orientation of the model is extremely important for SLS 3D printing. Yeah, so this is a compromise. This is what we what we uh, unfortunately you have you have many things to think about. This is the compromise. So if you want to have <clears throat> perfect tolerances, you need to print vertically, uh, 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 horizontally. Um, but at the same time, you can have warping effects and so on, so on. So you need to. Um, have a compromise between uh, how you how can you place the, the print to have maximal uh, tolerances quality and uh, to have the, the the model not warped or, and so on so on. Okay, so many many compromises in in, in this direction. Uh, okay, next question: uh, Are you planning to create any platform for customers to ex exchange experience, especially in using different powders or dyeing processes? Uh, yes, we are thinking about it. Uh, we should uh, release something like this in the next year. Uh, I'm uh, I don't not have information in one month, but for uh, you will receive a newsletter or mail with information if something like this appear. Uh, but yes, yes, we are we are thinking about it. My question about total working time has been misunderstood. Okay, for example, we have printed uh, twenty times so far. Does uh, the total time right or shown somewhere? Oh, in the software, do you advise uh, me anything? Uh, spare parts have a replacement time. Uh, for example, the recoder cable must be replaced after two hour, uh, 200 hours, or the lifetime of the laser is at least 10,000 uh, hours. Uh, how we, uh, how uh, can we see if uh, these times are exceeded? Okay, okay, so this is, this is the actual question. Okay, so there is, I think there is no way to know how long the printer was printing so far, okay? There is no counter. We can do, we can probably add something like this, but in the near future. Um, so if you already have the printer, then, then there is, you, you have no knowledge about it. That's that's one thing. And the other thing about uh, the, the parts, yes, the, 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 the usage of the parts, okay? So how long will it take to, to for the um, cable to snap, for the uh, laser to, to, to lose power and so on, so on. Um, 
you must understand that the two hours, 200 hours of printing for the cable, it's just a statistic. So um, it's possible that you will have a longer uh, uh, usage time. For instance, 300 hours or 400 hours and so on and so on. We sometimes, we at, uh, um, down below uh, on our production lines and in the printing department, uh, sometimes we do not replace the cable for very, very long times. And, and sometimes we, we scratch our head and, and ask, okay, how long can it take? Uh, uh, but um, so... so uh, so it happens, and the, the laser also the lifetime of the laser ten thousand uh, hours. It's it's a it's a it's an approximation. It's it's basically a statistic, okay? And it's not I think ten ten thousand hours. It's fourteen thousand hours, as far as I remember, because I wrote down the um, uh, those those docu documents and so on and so on. Um, so it's 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 very long basically. But to answer your question, there is no. Um, no means of uh, 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 telling whether those 200 hours are, are already in place and, and so on and so on. Uh, what can I uh, advise you to do? You can uh, save uh, the data from Sinteri Studio. You will have there uh, the exact time of printing. So if you uh, save this all uh, files of SPFZ, uh, you will get in some... Uh, how, what, how much time you spent on the printer. So maybe I, it will be the way for you to save this uh, data uh, from Synthetic Studio and uh, you will get this working hours, in fact. The, the, the easiest possible solution, I think, to that is simply uh, write down somewhere all the, the printing times, basically. I know it's, it sounds very basic and very outdated, but this is, this is the, the solution to this problem. Um, okay, uh, we have to uh, finish slowly. So maybe the last question. Uh, for FDM print, there are picture example of what went wrong and what to do to help. Does you have similar, similar? I guess. Well, we don't. Well, we don't have. Uh, we don't have it on our website, and we don't have it. I think in public. Okay, but I know that our support team is very keen on helping you um, to, to, to ensure you don't make any mistake. And basically when I am making um, all sorts of courses to how to print and how to uh, use the printer, I always tell that if you have a problem, if you don't know how to, uh, how to print your objects, how to print your models, because you are unsure of how to position them and so on and so on, you can send us the model if you can, because it, if it's not confidential, you can send us the model and we'll place it and put it and, and give you specific advices of uh, what kinds of options to, to, uh, to flip uh, in and, and what kind to flip out and so on and so on. So you, you, will, you will be given a, 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 a very clear, clear uh, suggestions for what to do. And moreover, we also can uh, save our projects within the Lisa, uh, within this, the, the um, Sinterit Studio, and you can send us the entire project with your options available and so on and so on, and we will just adjust them and send you back the entire project. So, um, so okay, we don't have a, a base or guidelines how to do well. Guidelines we have, but we don't have a, a huge base like the FDMs uh, does. But we have a keen support, and not only the support, but we have keen workers here that will uh, simply solve the problem for you. So sometimes talking to a person is is far more better than than simply reading what you. Uh, we have use. also some guides for you so our support uh, for sure will provide you some additional information about how to position the model we we have some materials yeah, to share PDFs. with you so yeah, yeah. Uh, of course uh, you you will receive all necessary information Okay, we have to finish now, but uh, you can write to us in any time uh, at contact, to contact at synterit.com. Uh, so uh, if you have further questions, want to uh, receive the sample or the offer, you can write to us or you need to help how to design uh, the model for SLS 3D printing. Uh, we, we will help you, of course. Uh, so contact at synterit.com. Uh, you will also receive information after webinar, so you can uh, watch this again. Uh, and thank you for watching. Um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully till till next time, and hopefully you've uh, 
uh, you've liked uh, the webinar and the the answers to to the question you had. Yes, we are here to help, so you you can contact us anytime. Thank you, and uh, yes, have a good yes, evening. Yes, yes, and w one more thing I, I forgot. Um, um, probably uh, you you will be sent a, a very short questionnaire about what. Uh, what would be what should be the topic of the next webinar of the third webinar? So if you would uh, uh, please be so kind to fill fill in the questionnaire, uh, short very short questionnaire, we will be very gr grateful. And and that's about it. So now we yes. can end. Yes. So thank you once again. Thank you. Have a good uh, evening.